Hey everybody, it's Mrs. Clemens, and this is Psychology Flipped. And as always, remember, keep calm, study psychology. All right, you guys, so what we're talking about today is um, the body and behavior. And um, you would be surprised how much our body and all the biological things that make us who we are impacts our behavior. Now, for this PowerPoint, um, I've got different brains that are the animation. Why? Because I got bored doing one brain and how, what is better than one brain but a bunch of brains, duh. So uh, anyway, let's get started. All right, so let's, talk, I'm sorry, I'm laughing at my own animations. Uh, so let's get started and talk about the nervous system because we are gonna start, start with the brain here. And um, the, there are two physical parts of our nervous system. We've got the central nervous system, which is our brain and the spinal cord. And then we have our peripheral nervous system. And it's basically everything else. So if I stub my toe, the, the nerves in my toe um, register that feeling. Then that feeling goes through my foot and then through my leg and up my leg and in through my hip. And then it hits my spine. And that's when it becomes onto my central nervous system. All that other stuff, my toe and my foot and my leg and my thigh, that's all the peripheral um, nervous system. And so I have this neat animation here that kind of shows what the deal is. So you've got, as it's showing, here's the central nervous system, the brain and the spinal cord. Everything else, guys, everything else is the um, peripheral nervous system. So if I, you know, um, cut off your hand or cut your hand, um, peripheral nervous system. And that's why when people have accidents, um, you know, that sever their spinal cord, that's why basically afterwards that they're not able to use, you know, they could become, you know, paraplegic or quadriplegic. So not good. All right. Again, we're writing this because we have our little brain. Then we have different functions of the brain. So what we just talked about were the different physical parts, and now we have different functions. And so this one, I don't know about you, I have a hard time memorizing things. This one is one of the easier things to memorize because it's, it's the things that happen involuntarily or automatically that we can't, you know, we can't make it happen. Um, it just, it happens. So these are the automatic or autonomic. So for example, um, you know, if I were to walk into a freezer, back when I worked at McDonald's, you have, we had a walk-in freezer. Um, when we go in there, we don't just say like, you know, hold out our arms and go like, go, go gadget, goosebumps, and goosebumps pop out. Like it happens automatically. That's part of our autonomic nervous system. And so here it's got all the different things that it talks about, you know, like dilating our pupils. So it gets bright, our pupils dilate. Um, you know, uh, maybe makes your throat dry, um, allows you to breathe quicker, um, accelerates your heart, um, you know, maybe gets things going um, in terms of your adrenaline. Um, and definitely it stops your digestive system um, from working. And that's when we're talking about the sympathetic. So just to make things more complicated, we have the autonomic nervous system, and then there are two parts to that. So the sympathetic nervous system that's pictured right here, that's the stuff that helps us to deal with things. So especially like think about if you're a track, somebody that runs um, on track, like your, your sympathetic part of your nervous system, um, autonomic nervous system is working all kinds, like working really hard, um, keeping you on edge. That's why like people that play sports, they don't have to go to the bathroom while they're playing because basically it shuts down uh, your, um, your digestive system. Whereas parasympathetic, if we stay like that in the sympathetic, dude, we're gonna die, all right? Our hearts are gonna explode or something. Um, parasympathetic is the thing that helps us afterwards. <sighs> all right, so now we're resting and um, we're able to, to digest. And so here, you know, now it's talking about constricting your pupil. Now you're getting your saliva going again. Now, you know, we're, we're, um, our, our um, lungs don't have to be as open anymore. You know, now, you know, you're able to digest, digest and stuff. And so then the other part, so we have the autonomic nervous system. Then the other part of that is the somatic nervous system and that controls our voluntary activities. So if I were to, 
go like that. That was voluntary. <laughs> I hope it didn't hurt your ear. Uh, me talking is sympathetic, or I'm sorry, somatic. Um, you writing the notes, somatic. Um, me jumping up and down like a lunatic. I'm doing it right now. You can't see me, but I look crazy. Ah, um, that's somatic nervous system. <laughs> I'm not jumping up and down. Um, you may know that. Um, so here's another animation. <laughs> love my animations. Um, our nervous system is made up of neurons. And so, um, well, actually, it's part of nerves. And then part of nerves are neurons. And that's how messages travel. Um, and uh, Mr. Hoffman, my eighth grade, nope, sorry, 10th uh, grade uh, science teacher, bio teacher, he made us memorize all these parts. And I still remember them from that. I won't make you memorize them, um, but definitely if you go into psych, you, you do have to know more about this. Um, so yeah, so we have the neurons, and then for, um, for messages to go from one neuron to the next neuron, they travel via neurotransmitters. So later on, when we're talking about like depression, for example, and we're saying, oh, you know what, it might be a chemical malfunction in the brain, you might not have either, you might you might not have the right um, neurotransmitters in your brain, maybe you're lacking some of them, or you don't have the right receptors um, on your neurons to actually get some of those chemicals. So it's pretty crazy how important this is biologically to, to our behavior. Um, and then how do we study the brain? Um, we, um, we could do it a, a variety of ways. Today, we're using EEGs and MRIs and PET scans. If you ever had an MRI, that's the thing where you're, um, you're going into the tube. The PET scan is a tube thing too. The EEG is when you, um, I'm actually like <laughs> putting my hands on my head. Um, that's the thing where they put like those little uh, suction cup things on your head. That's the best way to do it today. Um, Another way you could do it is stimulation, where you're actually um, doing things to make the neurons fire. What we don't do uh, today as much, I mean, now mostly it's done post-mortem, meaning after you've uh, passed away, but what they used to do was actually cut into the brain, and so they'd cut in and they'd be like, oh, cool, what can you do now? Oh, you, you're dead? Oh, maybe that was an important part for living. Oh, um, we'll cut into another part. Oh, you can't speak? Oh, maybe that's the speaking part. Obviously, we don't do that anymore. All right, folks, well, that's the end of the first part of our video. Um, let me know if you have any questions, and I hope you enjoyed it.